time is going to come up at some point in your animation career, so you want to go ahead and get that under your belt now. What you do want to keep in mind is that we're not going to be doing any sliding or pivoting for this turnaround. Uh, sliding would be against the mechanics issues, uh, unless you were standing on oil or ice or something like that. That's the only time your feet would ever slide. You actually need to actually step around, which means that we'll be going through all the walk poses to create this turnaround. As for pivoting, it's a bit beyond what we can cover in this course because the mechanics for it are so different and a bit more exaggerated than what we've already covered. So we're going to keep it simple and stick with just doing it as a step around. So no pivoting, no sliding. So the feet will continue to walk, but the character is just going to be walking in a different direction. So we're still going to apply all the same principles we learned during the basic walk. If you have any questions about the poses of the basic walk, what goes into each of the poses, such as how the character should be balanced, what channels you should be using for the feet, and so forth, then I'd highly advise going and reviewing the basic walk videos that have been provided for you before going forward with this turnaround video. So here we have the contact and passing poses. For the straight part of the walk up until this point. And from here, we're going to have the character actually start his turnaround by stepping forward and pulling his blue foot a little bit in front of the red foot. So from this contact pose, 12 frames later, on frame 25 is where our next contact pose is going to be. So that's going to bring the blue foot forward. And unlike with the walk demonstrations before, uh, I'm going to kind of jump around on the body mainly because of how twisted these uh, new positions can make the character. So to kind of get the character a bit cleaner, I'm going to be jumping around a bit instead of going from the feet and working my way just up the body. So if the blue foot comes around here, go ahead and rotate it in Y and try to get it as close to the bench as possible while still looking comfortable. The red foot here is the back foot now, so we're going to go ahead and zero out the heel and toe lift and make sure it has lift heel. And the hips. To make sure they rotate in Y and they rotate in Z is at zero as we translate it forward. Now, for this front foot, we have a few options. We could try to have the foot land with heel and toe lift you can see that starts to look a little bit uncomfortable the reason for that is usually we use heel and toe lift if the character is going to take a forward step so if this foot was going to come out more in front of the red foot then this would look more comfortable as it's crossing over the red foot and it's still considered like a forward step but as the character is taking a step out here and it's getting to be more closer to being a backward step, we're usually going to land our foot with lift heel. This is going to have it so that the toe lands first and we reach out to get extension with the toe first before uh, flattening the foot on the down pose later on. So if the foot continues to walk forward, use heel and toe lift. If it's taking a step backwards, you want to use lift heel know the pose may look a little bit awkward or knock need, but it's partially because you're you know you're, you're having to stare at it for a long time as you're continuing to posing to pose it and so forth even though it's just one pose out of many frames so it's going to get into it and get out of it very quickly we actually do this kind of pose all the time but again because you're in and out of it so quickly it's really not that noticeable Have our back controls and zero those out before we start rotating them in Y. 
and you notice the back controls start to kind of do their own thing the further we go into the turnaround because they're falling behind the hips but they also have to kind of obey the uh, the centripetal force of the character spinning around so the torso, the back controls, and the arms may not have the exact same rhythm they had while the character was walking uh, straight you may get the the rotation is doubling up sometimes, like it rotates twice in the same direction. Things like that can happen uh, as we're doing the turnaround, and that's fine. Because at this point, again, we're worried about the mechanics of how that character's moving and stuff, and so forth. And that's going to be shown to us in the graph editor. It's just not necessarily going to have the same rhythm that we had when we were walking straight. We can start turning the head. The head should be leading the turnaround so that the character starts to look in the direction that he's going. And also I want to make sure that I rotate the eye control to match the direction that the character's turning in. The reason for that is the eyes aim at each of these individual controls. So this eyeball aims at this inner control, this eyeball aims at this inner control. If we don't rotate this eye control, the main eye control, with the body, then the character's going to start looking cross-eyed as he turns around. So be sure to rotate the eyes, and then we're going to pull the elbow pull vectors closer to the body so they can stay close to the arms and keep that degree of control. Let's go ahead and key that pose. And there we have our first contact pose, but first we want to check our balance. Going in our front ortho view, we want to make sure that our hips, butt, and torso are centered between the character's feet here. Not only do you want to do that in the ortho front and side views, he's a little bit far forward there, but you want to rotate around in perspective as well, keeping in mind that the arrow right here in the front of the character, where his belt buckle would be, should be pretty much evened out with the direction that his toes are facing in. So, we see his toes are kind of facing this direction. You may want to push that a little bit more and rotate Y so that it's pretty much uh, evened out with the direction of the toes. But you want to check your uh, balance in perspective because if the character is uh, at a slight angle, then the orthographic views aren't going to give you the actual true balance of his side and his front. So you want to look at him from his side and the perspective and his front you know, rotate all around the character to make sure that he's going to be in balance. Okay, so we have our contact here. So now let's go to our next contact. At 37, and that's where the red foot is going to step back. So again, only one foot moves at a time because we're doing contact poses. So just like with the basic walk, the other foot has to stay in place and take the character's weight while one foot is actually stepping. If you keep this in mind, that'll help prevent any sliding in your scene or anything. Back. And then rotate the hips to support the feet position because now the red foot is stepping backwards. And again, trying to get as close to the bench as possible because if it's not any close to the bench, then you're going to have issues with the character sitting down. So you want to try to get his feet as close to the bench as you possibly can without him like going through the bench or anything like that with the legs. Now again, because the red foot is taking a backward step, it's going to have a lift heel on it. I'm just going to change up the value on the heel so it's not exactly the same as the previous contact pose. And I'm also going to leave lift heel on this foot, even though it's technically the uh, back foot now. Because it's going to be rolling off the ground, I don't want to have it uh, rolling back on the heel 
because it's going to make the down pose a bit more difficult. So for sake of simplicity, I'm leaving this foot with lift heel. So once again, both feet will have lift heel on them. And this will allow you to create the down pose where, again, the foot rolls off the toe before it takes a step. And when I'm doing a turnaround, I tend to zero out my wrists, my hand controls first before I start reposing them, and then just rotating them in Y in the direction that the character is turning. This can sometimes uh, help eliminate issues with gimbal lock and other technical, technical issues with the wrist flipping out and everything. So it's not a foolproof method, but again, it usually helps me out rather than building with rotations upon rotations. So if I zero out my rotations there, and then rotate this in Y around before getting it into its pose. And then let's check our balance again, front ortho view. Make sure that the character is centered right between his feet there. And side ortho view. Before rotating around the character in perspective. Again, checking from him from his front. Cool, so he's right balanced between his feet here. And his side is balanced that way as well. And go ahead and key that pose. Now we have contact, contact, so this really should just leave us with one more contact where we can adjust this blue foot here. So on our final contact, I'm going to go ahead and rotate our foot here and bring it back closer to the bench. So since this is the final contact, this red foot isn't going to be taking any more steps. So that means we can go ahead and leave it at zero for our lift heel, so it's completely flat. It's not going to be rolling up off the ground to go anywhere after this, so just leave it flat. The blue foot is landing, taking a backward step, so once more, leaving it with lift heel, just varying up the value on it so it's not the exact same. And check our ortho views. And our perspective. For balance. And from here we can go ahead and key that pose. And that creates our final contact. So we step around, character steps back, and then has a readjustment step here. Now I'm creating the passing poses for this turnaround. It's going to be handled much the same way as the passing poses for the rest of the walk but we'll just have to pay a little bit more attention to the curve progression since the character is turning around and the axes that he's acting upon have changed some. 
So our perfection pose here is going to be on 31. Again, the blue foot should be flat because it will be the supporting foot here. And the red foot will pick up and come closer to the blue foot and be right beside it in the side view when you look at the character from his side. Lift it up and shove toe tip and toe lift. Make sure we shift our weight. Now let's check this in our side ortho view. And you can see already that the character's side to side movement isn't translate X anymore. It's going to be the translate Z. Because the character is almost 90 turning 90 degrees at this point. So that axis right here that's shifting side to side is now going to be the translate Z to what used to be his forward momentum. Now, so we will have rotate Y on passing poses now because the character is turning around. However, the good thing about this is the rotate Z curve progression is actually going to be the same throughout the walk. It is independent of the direction the character faces. So once we key this, I'll show you how the rotate Z doesn't really change because no matter which way the character faces, rotate Z is going to be rotate Z. So now with this pose keyed, let's look at what's happening in the graph editor. As mentioned, this is still it's going to set up our extremes and our rotate Z values with our passing poses. So regardless of which way the character is facing, rotate Z is still going to progress in the same way it did when the character is walking straight forward. Rotate Y we want to give special attention to though because it should still progress between the contact values. The contacts are setting up our extremes and our rotate Y. And our passing poses should be halfway between those values. This is going to make it possible so we can set up our downs and up poses later, which will fall between contact values and the passing values. So you want to make sure that in rotate Y, the passing poses are still halfway between the contact values. Fortunately, that doesn't mean they're going to be zero anymore because the character is turning around, but you should be able to go into the graph editor and manipulate the rotate Y passing pose till it's halfway between the contact values. Here we have our translate X and translate Z, which again are effectively switching duties as now the translate Z is the side to side movement while the translate X is the forward movement. I'm going to also check his foot here because I want to make sure it's rotating correctly, rotate Y, because it's coming from this contact pose and moving into this contact pose. So again, I want the rotate Y to be about halfway between those contact values. Let's move up the rest of the body. Checking my rotate Y again to make sure it's about halfway between the contact values. There we have our character shifting his weight over. Balance. And he goes into his contact pose. And then for the final passing pose. Once more, we're going to lift this foot up and bring it in closer to the body. While 
the red foot, the supporting foot is going to go flat. Tilt of our hips. Our back and our neck. And then we'll check our balance. Now with this pose key, we can go in and make our adjustments. Take our rotate one. Shift it over. Look at our foot again. Checking the rotate Y and it. You can see that between here and there probably rotates a bit too much so we can tone that down move this up halfway between the contact values here And there we will have created our contact, passing, contact, passing, and final contact. Now from here we can go and continue on to add in our down and up poses again, keeping in mind that they're going to fall between our contact and passing values as our extremes. So this is why it's important that we always set up our contact values first and then move on to our passing poses because they're setting up our extreme values and then setting up our middle values between those. Once we have those in there, you can handle again the arms more of a straight ahead kind of method. Once you have all your poses in, you can kind of see where you're going from, from one extreme, which will still be on the down poses, to the next extreme. So much like the straight part of the walk, don't have to sweat the arm positions too much until you have all of your poses in.